Hey you and welcome to lesson 22. Today we are going to learn about sentences. What is a sentence? Uh, what types of sentences are there? And the parts of speech that, can, that, that consist, uh, that the sentence is consisted uh, of. Uh, we'll also talk about fanboys and conjunction. So without further ado, let's go ahead and start today's lesson. So in today's lesson, we are going to talk about the type of sentences. What, uh, how many types of sentences are there in the English language? But before we talk about the sentences, I want to talk about the parts of speech. There are eight parts of speech in the English language, and there are as follows. Noun, pronoun, adjectives, verb, adverb, preposition, conjunction, and interjunction. Let's take each one of those on its own. So a noun is a word that represents a person or a place or a thing. That is called a noun. It could be a name or it could be uh, <coughs> a, a country, a city. A noun can be subject or can also be an object. It can, it <coughs> in a sentence, it could be the subject of the sentence or it could be the object of the sentence. Here are some example of nouns. Place, house, city, factory, shelter, London. It could be a thing. <coughs> this includes object like table, London Bridge, nitrogen, month, inch, and so on. It could be an animal, a rat, a shark, a mouse. It could be an idea. It could be confusion, kindness, faith, and verb. What is a verb in the English language? Verb is an action. <coughs> a verb is a word or a group of words which describes an action. So a verb is an action in the sentence. Okay? Like, <coughs> sing, write, love, know, have. Those are all actions committed in the sentence. Those are the verbs. Let's put them in a, uh, let's put them in a, in a sentence. She plays basketball. She is the subject and plays is the verb. Lily sleeps. Lily sleeps. Sleep is a verb. Of course, this is not a complete sentence. If you, if you have to make it a complete sentence, it will be Lily sleeps early, or Lily sleeps late, or Lily sleeps often. You need to complete it. But sleeps is the verb. It is the action that is taking place in this sentence. The subject is Lily. The object is <coughs> unknown because we didn't complete the sentence, but the verb is sleeps. What is a sentence? A simple sentence is a set of words that contain a subject and a predicate. Okay? What does that mean? In a sentence, we have two parts. We have a subject, the person who is doing, and then we have a predicate, the action that is being done. Okay, so you speak English. The you is the subject, and speak English is, it is what is said about the subject. Ram and Tara speak English when they are working. So Ram and, and, Ram and Tara is the subject, and then speak English when they are working is the predicate. It is what is said about the subject. There are four types of sentences in the English language. There is the simple sentence and the compound sentence and the complex sentence and the compound complex sentence. Today we are just going to talk about the first two, which is this one and this one. We're going to talk about the simple sentence and the compound sentence. Now, what is the simple sentence? A simple sentence consists of one independent clause. What is an independent clause, you ask me? An independent clause contains a subject, a verb that expresses 
or complete a thought. Okay, so it's basically <coughs> a subject and a predicate of one action. That's it. It's a simple sentence. Let's take examples. I like coffee. I like coffee. Mar uh, Mary likes tea. Mary likes tea. The earth goes round the sun. The earth goes round the sun. Mary didn't go to the party. One action and it's completed. Uh, <coughs> that is called a simple sentence. A simple sentence has one clause. That means one subject, one verb, and that's it. Now, let's take a look at a compound sentence. A compound sentence is basically two simple sentences. And they are joined together with something that we call a fanboy. A compound sentence is two or more independent clauses joined by a coordinating conjunction or a semicolon. So, a coordinating conjunction is something that connects those two simple sentences. So we have one sentence that contains a subject and a verb, uh, and you know, and uh, <coughs> and uh, a thought, a complete thought, one complete thought, and then we have another simple sentence that contains a subject and a verb and a complete thought. Okay, and then we decide to put those two together and we call it a compound sentence. So how do we connect those two together? We either use a conjunction, a coordinating conjunction, or we use a semicolon. What is a semicolon? It's this. It's when you go, um, this is a semicolon. This and this, okay? Oh, this is too long. Nope. Okay, this is a semicolon. Now, let's take a look. Marie likes tea. I like coffee. Marie likes tea is a sentence, a simple sentence. I like coffee is another simple sentence. Now, let's put those two together, and we will have a compound sentence. We will use and. Marie likes coffee. Uh, I like coffee, and Marie likes tea. I like coffee, and Marie likes tea. So, and is a coordinating conjunction. Coordinating conjunction are fanboys. We'll talk about fanboys in details in a second. Um, Marie went to work, John went to the party. So we have two simple sentences. Marie went to work. Marie is a subject, went is a verb, to work is the complete the first thought. So this is one independent clause, and then we have another independent clause, which is John went to the party. John is a subject, went is a verb, to, went to, uh, to the party is to complete the thought, and we have another independent clause. Now, let's connect those two together, and here we are going to use but, okay, but. Marie went to work, but John went to the party. Marie went to work, but John went to the party. But is another coordinating conjunction, which is another fanboy. Um, our car broke down. Okay, let's see. Our car broke down. We came late. Oh, last, sorry. Our car broke down. That is one independent sentence. Our car broke down. Why am I using the wrong tool? There you go. Our car broke down. That is one sentence. Our is the subject. Uh, our car is a subject because it, it broke down. Broke is the verb. Um, and uh, it's a one, one independent clause. And it's a complete thought. Our car, the subject, broke down. The verb and the complete thought. We came last. We, the subject, came as a verb. Last is to indicate to complete the thought. So two, two perfectly uh, simple sentences. Uh, <coughs> one is our car broke down and the other one we came last. Now let's put them together and make a compound sentences, uh, compound sentence. So we will use here a semicolon, a semicolon, which is right here. Our car broke down, we came last. Can we use a fanboy? Of course we can use a fanboy. We can say, our car broke down, 
so we came last. Auto car broke down, so we came last. So is a coordinating conjunction, which is another fanboy. Now, we've been talking about uh, coordinating conjunctions and fanboys. What are they? Coordinating conjunction are, let's highlight, coordinating conjunction are used to join uh, two simple sentences into a compound sentence, okay? Um, joining compound sentences with coordinating conjunctions, usually we use independent causes with one of the seven coordinating conjunctions. So how many coordinating conjunctions are there? There are seven coordinating conjunctions. What are they? They are for and nor but, or, yet, so. So those are seven coordinating conjunctions. Coordinating conjunctions, that's a very big word, right? Is it doesn't, you know, roll, uh, roll off your tongue. So instead of saying coordinating conjunction, we can just say fanboys. Where does the name come from? F for four. F for four, A for and, N for nor, B for but, O for or, Y for yet, S for so. So this will help us remember those seven coordinating conjunctions. And, uh, you know, easy way to remember them is by just remembering the word fanboys. Okay, so let's see fanboys in action. First fanboy we're going to take is and. And is a conjunction. It's most common conjunction. It has several uses. Okay. First, okay, we use and to join two clauses that are of equal value. London is in England and Rome is in Italy. Equal values. London is in England and Rome is in Italy. We use it, we use and to join two clauses when the second clause happens after the first clause. <coughs> Excuse me. So we use um, if the first clause, <coughs> the second clause happen after the first clause. We use and. Um, there was a big bang and the lights went out. There was a big bang, a boom, and then the lights went out. We use and to join two clauses when the second clause is a result of the first clause. So we have two clauses. The first cause happened and then the second cause happened because of the first cause let's see an example he went to bed early so he went to bed early whoops no 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 he went to bed early and the next day he felt better so because of the first uh, clause the second clause happened he went to bed early so he felt better the next day. All right, next fanboy is but. But is also a, is a, a popular conjunction. It's used to connect two clauses, okay? Now, the uses, we use it to introduce a clause that contrasts with the preceding clause. What does that mean, contrast? It means it, it, it doesn't, um, it contrasts it. It's the opposite of the preceding clause. Okay, what does that mean? Let's take a look at the sentence and decide. Uh, Mary ran fast, but she couldn't catch John. It means even though she ran fast, she still couldn't catch John. I love fruit, but I'm allergic to strawberries. It means I love fruit, but I can't eat strawberries because I'm allergic to them. Jack is my best friend, but my wife doesn't like him. I mean, to be honest, nobody likes Jack, right? Or, that is another fanboy. That is the third fanboy today, and it is an alternative. Uh, it, it is to join two alternative clauses. It means uh, you have a choice between this or this. Let's see. Marie, uh, will Marie go or will John go? Who is going to go, Marie or John? Have you tried or did you just ask for help? Have you tried 
or did you just ask for help? Which one is it? Do you try to do it or did you just ask for help because you're lazy? Admit it. Next one is nor. Nor is another conjunction to join two sentences when the first sentence uses a negative such as neither or never. So, nor, it means the first one didn't happen and the second one didn't happen. The first sentence didn't happen and the second sentence didn't happen either. But we can only use nor if the sentence begins with a negative uh, <coughs> with a negative uh, like uh, nev never or neither okay so let's take a look at some examples Marie never wrote the letter nor did she call him it means she didn't write a letter and she didn't call him so never she never wrote a letter and she never called him either we can use nor in this situation Marie never uh, wrote the letter nor she called him it means both actions did not happen all right, let's take a look at another example. My father neither smokes nor drink. My father neither smokes nor drink. I mean, my father doesn't drink. My father doesn't smoke. He neither smokes nor drink. Neither Tom nor Alex can speak Fran French. Um, Tom doesn't speak French. Alex doesn't speak French. They don't, don't, they don't, don't speak French. They both don't speak French. That means we can use nor. Neither Alex nor Tom speak French. He can't see nor hear. He can't see nor hear. It means he can't see and he can't hear. So he can't see nor hear. Here the negative is not neither or never, but it is can't. But it is still a negative. As we said, the sentence has to start with a negative. It doesn't matter if we don't use neither or never, but we still use a negative. Uh, Jack neither accepted nor rejected the offer. Jack neither accepted nor rejected the offer. It means he didn't accept the offer and he didn't reject the offer, so he neither accepted nor rejected the offer. I hope that makes it clear for you. For is another conjunction that mean because. Okay, what does that mean? Uh, for, a lot, uh, a lot of people get confused when, when it comes to for, because for is also a preposition. So when we use for as a preposition, it's not a fanboy. When we use for as a fanboy, it means it has to mean because, okay? Uh, it is to join two clauses. The second clause is the reason for the first clause. So we have two clauses. The second clause is the result or the reason for the first clause, and we connect them by using for, which mean in this case because. Let's take a look. He felt cold for it was snowing. So the reason he felt cold is the snow, because it was snowing. So we can replace for with because, and it would still make sense. He felt cold because it was snowing. The man cried for he fell from the ladder. What is a ladder? This is a ladder. You see? The one you climb on. The man cried for he fell from the ladder. So why did the man cry? Because he fell from the ladder. Next one. She was late for she missed the train. Why was she late? Because she missed the train. So she was late because she missed the train. Or we can say she was late for she missed the train. Notice it's different from using for as a preposition. This is using for as a fanboys. Next one. I don't eat peanuts for I'm allergic to nuts. I don't eat peanuts for I'm allergic to nuts. That means that is, that is the reason I don't eat peanuts. You could like them, but you can't eat them. Next one. He doesn't want to shop at the new supermarket for it's very expensive. Why doesn't he want to shop at the new supermarket? Because it's very expensive. Next fanboy is yet. Now, yet is a conjunction that is similar to but. It means something like but at the same time. Okay? So, if the closest meaning to yet in a sentence is but at the same time. Or in spite of this. Or in spite of this. You remember in spite of, despite, although, though, same family. Okay, let's take a look at some example. 
I have known him for a long time, yet I have never understood him. It means, although I've known him for a long time, I never understood him. Or, uh, I've known him for a long time, but at the same time, I never understood him, because he's a complicated man. I've always loved traveling, yet I never left the country I was born in. It means, despite of the love for traveling, he still uh, travels locally in the same country. He never left the country. So again here, it means, but at the same time, he loves traveling, but at the same time, he never left, he never left his country. Um, it was early, yet we were all ready for bed. Although it was early, we were all ready for bed. He is my worst enemy, and yet I admire him. He was my yet enemy, but at the same time, I admire him. I respect him. I think he's a good guy. Last fanboy is S. So, and so means therefore or for this reason. So is, it means therefore or for this reason. So let's see what, uh, how do we use it in a sentence. Oh, also, uh, the first cause is the reason for the second cause. The first cause is the reason for the second cause. That's what we use, so. He was feeling sick, so he went to the doctor. So the first cause is the reason the second cause happened. We were having so much fun, so we forgot to do our homework. Now, don't get confused. There are two shows. Only one of them is a fanboy. The first show means very so much it means very much a lot so we were having so much fun so we forgot to do our homework my sister is very smart so everybody likes her i am the i'm learning english so one day i can travel the world so this is it for today i hope you guys enjoyed the lesson I'll see you next class. Stay safe.